And the rubberization means that it gives the ability of the material to flex, but also absorb shock. And when we, had, when we saw we could do this with Activa, it got us very excited because uh, my early mentor in dental materials was Dr. Ralph Phillips out of Indiana. And he always used to say, you know, I don't know who we think we are, you know, God gave us two materials, enamel and dentin, and here we are, we're shoving one thing in there and trying to hope for the best. And neither of them were acting like either enamel and or dentin. So most of the time in composites, we tried to make composites hard like enamel, but not function like enamel. And, and there's a big difference between looking and acting. <laughs> And so it's the same thing with dentin. You know, glass ionomers, I'm a glass ionomer guy from the late 70s. I love glass ionomers. I've worked on glass ionomers for two different companies. And, and I'm, I think they're great. But I knew all along, you know, we had solubility issues, so that limited them in certain ways. It was either aesthetics or, you know, so on and so forth. But really it was just longevity. And the original design of Activa was not for what you hear about today. It was for public health. It was for art to give you long-term restorations that will go on maybe 10, 12, or more years. And that